It's really tricky for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the situation is evolving rapidly. But secondly, given the sheer costs of dissenting, it's very, very tricky to work out how many, what proportion of Russian society is opposing what's happening in Ukraine. And that applies to the elite, whether we look at the political, the cultural or the economic elite, but also at the population more broadly. It doesn't mean that we haven't got some insight into what's taking place, but just getting a complete picture is, as I say, very difficult at the moment. How accurate are the numbers of protesters that are being reported and what's happening to the thousands who've been arrested? I think we can be most confident in the figures that are being reported regarding the number of people who've been arrested at anti-war protests. It's much more difficult to get a sense of the number of people who are turning out. But also, the number of people who are turning out maybe isn't as high as some people would expect. But that's understandable, given the enormous cost that people face by turning out. If they turn out to anti-war protests, these are unsanctioned in the eyes of the Russian state, which means that lots of people are detained. And we've also seen reports are being tortured when they're in police custody. So it's not a very pleasant picture at the moment for those people who are brave enough in Russia to voice their dissent publicly. And how are they getting their information? What role are Russian opposition figures perhaps playing in spreading awareness about Ukraine? Alexei Navalny, who's currently serving a prison sentence, has called on Russians as well as people around the world to protest against Russia's invasion in Ukraine. But I don't think we should be simply looking at Alexei Navalny when thinking about the anti-war movement in Russia. Lots of people will be going out onto the streets because they will have seen on social media a picture of what's happening in Ukraine that challenges the Kremlin's narrative that this is a special military operation that isn't a case of Russia attacking Ukraine. It's an operation to liberate Ukrainians from what the Kremlin sees as a neo-Nazi government uh, that's led by Zelensky, that's a puppet of the West. So people are getting information from social media, but that's also the reason why the state is trying to frustrate those attempts to access information that challenges the Kremlin's narrative. And we're seeing the banning and blocking of independent news sources. So would you say the majority of Russians do support the war in Ukraine? At the moment, we are seeing polling data suggesting that a majority of Russians support the special military operation. And it's really crucial when interpreting the polling data that has been released so far that we pay, pay attention to that wording. Russians aren't being asked about a war because, according to the Kremlin, a war has not been launched by Russia regarding Ukraine. And so uh, paying attention to the questions uh, is important, but also paying attention to this question of social desirability bias that maybe there are some Russians who have clear opposition to what's taking place in Ukraine, and yet they don't even want to tell a polling agency their true feelings for fear of some type of repression from the authorities. Some really interesting points you're making there. How significantly will individuals in Russia be impacted by the sanctions being imposed on the country at the moment, or is it still too early to tell? I think we can say with some degree of confidence that the sanctions that have been posed following uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the ongoing war will have a really crippling effect economically. But then the most crucial thing will be the extent to which the Kremlin can uh, maintain control of the narrative, whether the Kremlin can convince a significant enough proportion of the population in Russia that the Kremlin shouldn't be blamed for the economic fallout from the sanctions. It's again the West and the West trying to cripple the country. So the media propaganda is going to be crucial for the Kremlin going forward, uh, especially as uh, things deteriorate rapidly when it comes to economic conditions in the country. Do you think there'll ever be enough pressure domestically for Putin to change course over Ukraine? That is the million dollar question. And when we're thinking about that, we should think broadly about the population, but also crucially about members of the elite. We know that there are lots of members of the elite who are opposed to what's taking place in Ukraine. They weren't included in the decision making leading up to the point of invasion. But now where I am looking for signs of people defecting, not challenging Putin. I don't think we should expect a palace coup in the short to medium term, but we could see more members of the elite uh, opposing what's taking place without without directly criticising Putin, and that could, in the long term, lead to a broader systemic challenge towards him. 
Tell us a bit more about the media coverage there, how it's in, evolved over the past two weeks since the invasion began. So the Kremlin has doubled down on its narrative that Ukraine is controlled by the government of Volodymyr Zelensky, that isn't legitimate, really, that it's a puppet of the West, that Ukraine is swarming with neo-Nazis. And this is a common trope that the Kremlin used to try and convince people that Russia is not the aggressor here, that it's trying to be the liberator. We also saw the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sergei Lavrov, claim that Russia hadn't even attacked Ukraine. And so the media is very forcefully projecting that particular narrative and presenting a worldview that Russia intervened to prevent a war, not to start a war. And uh, I think going forward, we're likely to see that media propaganda effort intensified. And do you think increasingly Russians are being cut off from the world and not able to access the global internet? Certainly, we know that the information regulator in Russia has taken steps to frustrate people's attempts to get information about what's really going on. We've also seen lots of Russians leave the country or try to leave the country, and that will mean that those individuals who are best placed to act as bridges between societies, some of them are leaving. And that means going forward, we are going to see Russia increasingly isolated from the West. And that is troubling on so many levels, it's difficult to know where to start. Ben Noble, thanks for your analysis. Thank you.